domain of data science you can say deep learning machine learning these kind of fields and he is also experienced for knowledge he is a developer programmer and he is also running quite a few companies where he is director as well and computer science head and he has guided few projects with uh, iit madras and iit patna as well currently he is in advisory board on brain alive private limited and also as principal consultant mr sujit has filed five patents as well and two copyrights on his own name he has also accomplished more than 30 research projects and all and for that he has received numerous awards from india and abroad as well and few of them are also available publicly to the market i mean they have been commercialized as well uh, his uh, main domain is uh, like brain computer interface and currently he is working at ashur university and uh, jointly i mean there is joint project from ashur university and iit kanpur under you carry fellowship and also he has keen interest in machine learning biomedical signal processing fluid interface so these are brief introduction about mr sujit and we have three ts which mr sujit have uh, selected uh, in detail mr sujit will tell uh, you about ts just i will brief their name dr sujit uh, dr gaurav garg he is also a machine learning researcher from brain and live research private limited mr vishal gaur he is also data science training in nokia company in finland uh, our third ta is mr ganeshwar rao gorle he is also a researcher in brain alive private limited so guys these are uh, the brief introduction of our ta's and speakers now i uh, i will over to sujit sujit please all right thank you uh, thank you prayag for the introduction everything so uh just to check uh with prayag uh you can hear my voice clearly right yes very clear yeah perfect so guys i uh, just have a quick introduction with your tas uh, we will be helping you out on the slack after the lecture in solving any doubts or anything else you can reach them out directly and uh i'll quickly go ahead with the lecture which will be up on our so i respect you the time so uh, i'll i'll ask all the tas to switch on the camera quickly please so i can see gaurav garg here so he is he has completed a phd in uh, computational neuroscience and he is right now working in brain alive working on open cv and uh, machine learning and computer vision projects for emotion and analysis mapping we have vishal gaur vishal gaur is a uh, uh, data science trainee at nokia headquarters in finland and he is working on natural language processing for identifying patents in the global domains uh, then we have ganeshwar agurle ganeshwar agurle has completed his bachelor's just so vishal has completed his masters from finland itself gaur has completed his phd ganeshwar has completed his bachelor's just now from nih patna and he is working uh, in uh, <coughs> brain alive from the last one year in, in in the machine learning domain in designing different algorithms for computer vision and uh, uh, emo and, and eeg signal analysis for emotions so now <clears throat> we'll get on with the lecture so i uh, i'll just clearly uh, firstly tell you the the format of the lecture so what we'll be going through is so we will be <coughs> Uh, discussing uh, important topics, you have the syllabus and stuff. Well. So this today's first lecture will uh, it will be specifically focusing on uh, your basic introduction to the Python, so that you everybody is familiar with, and then you can go home and try it out uh, with the notebook. Jupyter notebook, you can use Jupyter notebook or Spider, whatever you feel like. You can use Google Colab as well if you're comfortable with it. <clears throat> and then in the following lectures, we we'll, I will try to explain the concepts and other stuff. this uh, machine learning uh, series is actually uh, uh, designed for uh, you know uh, basic introduction to the machine learning as well as you have um, the information in order to how to implement any model out there or or any data set so this uh, lecture series aims to jump start your knowledge in machine learning overall knowledge machine learning including nlp even so that just from the front face of the view you understand everything clearly now i understand that you some of you might crave for a deeper knowledge for but for the deeper knowledge or mathematical derivation or some other stuff i i will spare some of them but for some other stuff if you want to dig deep into it you might be willing to go for your own research or uh, not going with the same class so uh right now i'll start sharing my screen and you will be able to see my screen and then i'll be implementing it through jupyter notebook so 
Please, everyone, you can open up the Jupyter Notebook in your, in your own laptops. Once you are done, uh, you, can, uh, you, you, can, you can just write here, done, and then I can start with. And PGNC committee, can you start? Enable me to share my screen, please. Yes, you are good to go. Right, thanks. So, I think a Jupyter notebook. Are you able to see my Jupyter notebook, everyone? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> So I hope everybody has uh, their Jupyter notebook open. If anybody has any issues, please write to us. And TS, please keep looking in the chat. If somebody has, you can reach out to them and help them out, okay? So for other people, uh, just to start with quickly, uh, can you just write out there, uh, like uh, if you are fine with it and you want me to go ahead? Chat. So just please allow them for five minutes so that they all can get acquainted with opening this uh, software. Okay. So to open Jupyter Notebook, you might just open your Anaconda Navigator and you can click on the Jupyter Launch, okay? And once you click on the launch, uh, it will connect with your Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge or whatever you have set the preferences. Since mine is already running. <clears throat> so it will come up like this. So which is whatever your folders are in and everything. So you can go ahead and this thing. And to create a new pay, a new one, you just need to click on new and then just click on whatever Python you have installed with. So Python 3 and it will open a local host with the new Jupyter Notebook. I hope that helps. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. Okay, one got, and then since you emphasize this being among basics, you will not be touching upon deep learning models in any detail apart from the concept. Uh, somebody is asking, I uh, basics. Uh, no, we will be, uh, I will be trying to give you a knowledge about the deep learning models even, and then how to implement them and what sort of data set you can implement from, and also how you can fine tune the model as well. So I'll try to cover all those concepts. Go deeply means only the derived, so derivation of the model, uh, if you are interested in. So that means that mathematical derivation only. Like once the series is over, you will be able to look at any data and, and, and apply with existing model in any data across the globe and get your results. That's my aim. Now, everybody is able to run Jupyter? Yes. Okay. And there is a response if you have any problem. All right. So, uh, TS, please keep looking at the chat because once I will go to this, I will not be able to look at. So, if you, if they, if you think that they are having a problem, just stop me from going ahead. Yeah, sure. So, and if somebody is facing a specific issue, you can just chat them privately and go ahead with it. Just take initiative. 
So uh, in, in Python, so there can be different methods. This is, a, this is a just brief introduction of Python. So this will help you to uh, use the Python for upcoming lectures and implement it. So you have two different ways of printing. It is Python is, you can say that it is a very simple English language implementation actually. So whatever you feel like, you just write it. So to print hello world, you can just print it like this and two ways of printing. So just try to type this command into your, this cell. So this part is called the cell. You type it up and you, you can run this uh, a specific cell. For running it, you can use a shortcut control plus enter and it will give you an output. Okay. And the similarly print method can be used just by writing it in the <clears throat> inverted comma as well. And once you again do the control enter, you will see the execution as an output and you'll see the output. Everybody are together with me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So going ahead, so to assigning a variable or something uh, in the coming classes, obviously we'll be using assigning variable or something. This is the elegant way to assign, uh, actually print out the variable. You can just use X is equal to 15, Y is equal to 30. And then dot format can be used to print out the value. So you can use dot format X comma Y and you put any values and everything. It will be printed as the value of X is whatever X is here and the Y, whatever the Y is here. The same format can be used for strings as well. You see here, like the name and then greetings. Okay, so like hello, and then the name is called up and then greeting is called up. Okay, so it can be changed and we just keep on printing. So it can help you to generate the large names or something uh, automatically, sorry, uh, many salutations automatically or something like that. So once you write this up, you can just press enter. Even, <clears throat> If you assign the X like this, you can also, if you are using spider or something, you can use, you can see that in your console, you type it like X and it will give you the output of 15 in the variable explorer. One thing is very important actually. So once I am running it, I just, just launch it even. So let me go here. And uh, let me launch spider as well. So I'll show you one more quick trick before I go ahead, but it's okay. <coughs> so, this is for the strings is the same way of printing the nothing new. Then this is the way that you ask for an input in a Python program just by using the input. I told you before, it is just a simplistic English language. So you want to get an input, you will uh, call X. Uh, so X is a variable here. You're calling for the input function and it is taking in a name, right? So, and then you're asking for a printing of X. So once I run this, you see it asks for a enter a name, right? And then I put my name here and it just print X, okay? So this is the consecutive output of it. Please try it in your notebook. Can you come again how to run it? Just to run this specific cell, you just need to uh, press the, the, you know, just uh, press, just put point your cursor anywhere on that, uh, in that specific cell and just press control plus enter. Okay. <clears throat> then you have Python keywords. So Python keywords are like, you have, you have, these are the keywords that you cannot use as a variable or any assignment because they override the methods, right? So these are the specific keywords. You can always get a list of the keywords. I am not recommend you to remember it. Nobody does, but once you start using it, you will come to know that, okay, these are the keywords because they will be highlighted in a different color automatically, right? <clears throat> so, and then you have, uh, identifiers. So identifiers are the name that are given to entities like class, function, variables. Okay, and it helps differentiating one identity from another. So it's like it's like simple. You can say in other terms, it is simple variable assigning terms, right? But you can't use any special characters in the in identifier. For example, you see this is the invalid declaration of variable here. So one variable is equal to ten, and so try to print the one variable. 
and it is coming up as invalid syntax. But if I use underscore with it, it gets in combination, and then I can see the output here. Right? <clears throat> Are we together on this? Perfect. So then the methods to, uh, since you will be writing a program and everybody likes, uh, in, in the program, everybody likes that they have comments in their own program to track out where they have made the changes and other stuff. So you have Python comments. For commenting out anything in the Python, you use hash, or for multiple lines, you use double inverted comma, like this, right? So you can say <clears throat> this comment, and then it is a multi-line comment. So instead of using hash everywhere, you can just use this. But if you are using a scripting one, I can just clearly let me. So there are shortcuts as well. In order to do that, I think Control R you can use to uh, comment multiple lines as well. But that's in the scripting. For example, let's go for spider frameworks or any other one, maybe PyCharm or something else. Uh, so, Jit. Yes, please. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, people are saying, please go a little, little bit slower. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So, <clears throat> so do, where do you want me to repeat from if somebody? I think starting from uh, for mapping the string would be fine. We have a few comments about that. Yeah. Wow, it's a big <laughs> Okay. So <clears throat> format is assigning X and Y. Okay. So uh, I'll actually repeat this stuff if many people are facing it. Otherwise, TS, you can take the uh, problems privately as well so that we are not wasting time on other people. <clears throat> So I'll try to go slow for the right. So formatting is very simple here. And so you assign variables and then you use it to give an output in a specific format. So format you use here, like see x comma y. So it will be always be uh, whatever values are here for the x and y will be uh, will, will be represented here. Similarly, you see for the string, it is here in the dot format. I hope that uh, is clear now. So in other terms, you can call it as a, as a placeholder. Uh, if somebody is familiar with TensorFlow old one or something like that, I doubt though, but so you can consider like it's a place placeholder. So you can put anything in and use it as well. So I just wanted to show you one more thing. So since I'm using uh, this one, uh, uh, we are using this one, we can just go for uh, spider as well. And in the spider share, so this is my ticker and this is spider number. All right, so if you are able to see, so can you see my spider notebook? I think, right? So in this one, spider, one thing is very cool is like you can use x is equal to 15 and you press enter and you see in the variable it is automatically stored so you can explore the variables here you can look at the variables and other stuff and then uh, for example if i want to comment multiple lines so for example let's say that this is my uh, one of the definition and i want to comment these i can just use a short one thing is like you have seen how to comment but one shortcut can be control and one hello yeah uh, font size uh it's visible oh, okay. to you but uh, yeah yeah so okay so let's see that okay so this is okay python program so let's say that i just want to comment this uh, okay so i just selected them and i pressed control plus one and it commented all of them automatically okay so control one plus one again to back up and control plus one again to comment and uncomment okay one by one so this is like uh Explorer uh, so in the spider. So this will be sim. Uh, this will be something similar, I think, in Python, which is Control plus slash, I think. But you can just check it. Okay, and then I share. So 
Now let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook. So you have multiple lines, Python indentation. Okay, yeah, so this is very important uh, in Python. So indentation, so it, sometimes it automatically uh, adapts to the indentation, but if your indentation is not correct, you will get error in your program of indentation error. So it is very, for example, after the four, it automatically indented to the right. And then it will maintain the indentation until unless you ran into the another loop. So it's try to structure the program itself. So the indentation is useful here. So if I don't indent it, you will see there will be an indentation error here. See, expected an indented block. So if I just want to type it, I'll show you. Once I write for i is in range 15 and I press enter, it will automatically indent it to the correct station. Okay. And then I can just write it. And then I, when I run it, now it is able to give me all the outputs. Okay. <clears throat> so then again, similarly, in the case of if also, so any conditional statement or looping statement requires an indication or any definition as well, any function definition as well. <clears throat> so through print machine learning, it will give you, if I just remove this, I just change the indentation just a bit and you will see the change actually. So let's say I do write this and then, so as soon as I move it and I run it, indentation error. Somebody is running the television. Can you switch it off, please? Right. So now we have, so there are different data types in Python. So every value in Python has a data type and everything is object in Python. Data types are actually classes and variables instead of object with classes. So numbers, so you have integers and floating point numbers and complex numbers that falls under the Python's number category. They are defined as int for integers, float for decimal values, and complex for complex numbers. We can use the type function to know which class a variable or a value belongs to. So you can call in any number and just uh, any variable which you have called uh, stored up and just write in the type and it will give you what sort of uh, class it or value it belongs to. And then is instance function to check if an object belongs to a particular class. So I call you and this I write here the is of type X. Even if you just go for like this thing, it will give you the class name. Okay. But just to be elegant, I'm not going to change it. Okay, so it will give you the class. The 25 is with type class int because it is an integer. Now this should be float and once I run it, it will give me 2.5 is the type of class float. So by, so here to learn thing is type, okay? So anything that you, uh, so anything that you put here in the, like this, any variable and will give you the data type of that one. Similarly, we are looking at a complex number here, x is equal to one plus two j and then X is a complex number, then, so you, again, you see that uh, X, and then you, you check for the is instance that if my, whatever I'm saying is correct or not. So it checks that is instance one plus two J is complex. Okay, and it still turns the true true. Oh, x is equal to true and then you have the the type of the true are obviously boolean because it is true or false and then it so it shows us the class bool okay so these are just actually whatever i'm telling you right here is basically to tell you or uh, once you go into the program and once you are designing the model sometimes it will happen that uh, some specific definition require a specific type of argument so you should be able to verify it so similar can be used for verifying any variable that are that you are inputting into the uh, into the segment as well. Okay. Then here is Python strings. So we all generally know the strings because we have almost done you know some sort of computing in our school or something. So string is a sequence of characters. So computers do not deal with characters; they deal with numbers. Even though you may be <coughs> character on the screen, internet is stored as a manipulated combination of zeros and ones. 
The conversion of a character to a number is called encoding and the reverse process is decoding. Sky and Unicode are some of the popular encoding that we use. So I just go quickly over it because I think uh, that you guys uh, should uh, generally are aware of this sort of encoding or decoding techniques. Uh, that's like the, the string and the integer and stuff. These are the very basic fundamentals of programming. But if you have any doubt, you can just point me into the chat that if you don't know the concepts, then I can repeat, uh, I can ask them or direct it to them. Okay, so for example, if I'm defining a string, I will use double inverted comma as you have seen before as well. So here is a string x is equal to hello, welcome. So now you say that print s and now it is printed like this, okay? Now, <clears throat> s is stored as a string. So it is also stored in the form of say, uh, list indexing, okay? So let's say that these are all the strings. So now you look at these characters, okay? So they start with all the uh, listing start with index strings are the zero. So it is, a, uh, so capital H is at position zero, E is at one, L is at two, similarly L is at three, O is at four, and then this comma is at five, and then you have this at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay? So you say print s is hello welcome, but if you try to use a specific letter from that string or just call up the first variable, you can see print s is equal to uh, sorry print, uh, s from the zero, and then you will get the output as s. It is very important sometimes when you will get a program, maybe it is not very useful. Uh, might be useful for machine learning as well, but the program sort of palindrome or something in which you want to measure if it is correct from the uh, so it is same from the right and the left. Uh, like SAS, so the zero would be corresponding to two and then a one will be same, okay? So for those, it will be important. Then you have the slicing. So slicing is just, as the name suggests, uh, it's cutting something from the index value. So you're just cutting something from the index value. So you're cutting something from the index value five and then printing the rest of the one. So this is the colon. I think if anybody has, if you are familiar with it, so it is like, from five to the rest, give me out. And if we just reverse it, then we'll give you from the beginning to the five. Okay, and then, sorry, so S gone, and then you have the S, and then you just slice it, okay? Now, <clears throat> you have this string here. So string is welcome, and now you're trying to slice a small part of it, which is from zero and to two, so you're just trying to get the uh, slicing object here, which is, <clears throat> so now you're welcome. So you see W, L and O. So from zero, it will start and it will keep increasing at the variable two. So zero, then one and then two. So it picks up the second one, so it is L and then goes for more, one and two. Okay, so it goes up to O and it gives you the output. But if I change it here, Okay, so you get E as well. So it is going up to the further, how much far you want to put it go. Okay, so I'll just give you five minutes, sorry, not two minutes in order to recollect everything. And you say, if I'm good to go, I'll go ahead. Uh, Sujit, yes. in line 32, yeah. when you are saying S equal to uh, uh, hello, welcome. So whether it is storing as a string or a variable, I mean, S may be a variable or not. Yes, it is assigned variable, but it is storing a string, yes. So, I mean, uh, earlier you dis uh, you saw about the X and Y. So is it different from that or the same thing? No, it is similar, no, because in the beginning, when you saw it, I also used to store a name here. So what a name it was coming up was a string, isn't it? So I got x yes. equal to input, right? And similarly, you see x is equal to 15, y is equal to 30. I can also put x is equal to Sujit and it will print up that. So Python is an intelligent program language. It will automatically identify it as string and uh, integers. But the operations change the specificity that we'll cover next. So appending and other stuff.
So what is the use of double colon here in line 32? Just to tell right. uh, if you it, just yeah tell it it is a string that it is collectively a string. Okay. You know this whole thing is a string collectively. If I just put it okay. uh, a double column here, it will end here. So it will just collect hello as a string. So it's like putting all the characters together to say it. Okay. Thank you. Where is line 38? Since I'm impl implementing it randomly, my line will change. So please let me know. Sujit. Yeah. So this 8, oh, just one second, somebody asked something. So this 8 is telling how much far it has to go. So it is like similarly, if I tell you, that in, you have to start from zero and you have to end at eight with an increment of two. This is what it is represented. So eight is like, you see, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So <clears throat> sixth is the, this point and then two, you are increasing it. So zero, then you have two, and then you have four, and then you have six. So if I even if I do it seven, give me W L O E. Okay. If I do it six, it should not because it's not counting six in. Okay, yeah, Priya, you were asking something. Uh, someone has asked uh, instead of using double inverted, can we use single inverted? Will it work fine? Yeah. You can. Okay. So just to show you the similar thing here, I'll just quickly. Uh, come to the spider. And if you see it here in my variable scroll, I cannot zoom it. I'm extremely sorry for that in my variable scroll. So if I'm just putting S is equal to in inverted comma switch it, it will store in and it counted as a string. Okay. M is equal to modify become as string. Okay. And now. Okay, so now going ahead, so we have string methods. So, so this is going to be a bit important. Uh, in order to append any string, you just use the plus operator. For example, in the integer, if you do plus, the two numbers get added, right? But if you visualize it in the terms of string, you want to put two strings together, let's say hello and world together, then you will use both of them and just uh, add them up with plus and it will just concatenate both the strings, okay? So hello and welcome. So print S1 plus S2 and it will give you hello and welcome, okay? But if you want to iterate it three times or multiple times, you can just multiply it by a specific number and we'll iterate it as many numbers of times, which is very as simple as that, right? Now to iterating through the string, so this is the same thing I was talking to you before, like uh, you can use the indexing to identify the string. So you have say count is equal to zero for L in hello welcome. So L is any, so okay. So before we go to that, it is uh, something related to looping. So you use for loops for looping starting from uh, one to uh, starting from zero or any place you want, or a, you can use any index to loop from between. So it says like for, it will start taking variables from those input that you have provided and start implementing it. So for example, here, what it the count is equal to zero initially. So initializing something like this. Now you're using for L in hello welcome. Okay, so this obviously doesn't have any value, right? So if going here and then if L is equal to O, 
count plus one and then count letters found. Okay, so it is just trying to find the number of letters which are there in the string. Okay, so it is just trying. To, yeah, so it is just iterating through this whole string and it is trying to find how many o small o are present here. So we can see that there is one and there is two. So we saw that number of two letters found. Okay. If I change it to some other letter, let's say that L itself, it should come as three because we have three here. Okay. If I change it to E, it should come as E because we have three E as well. Okay. And let's say if I change it to something else, then it will be zero. Okay. If I do it doubly, then it should be one. So it is like iterating through the whole string to find out how many strings you, or like how many characters you might find. So this is just a basic concept of iteration. You might be able to use it or something. And there are different methods of the string. So we have half an hour and just try to go through quickly. So string methods dot lower dot upper dot lower is to make any string lowercase dot upper is to make any string uppercase. I'll provide you the notebook as well at the end of the lecture. I'll provide it to this uh, committee and they can distribute it among, uh, among you and then you can uh, implement it and again put on the Slack uh, for any doubts you have. <clears throat> then this will split. So this is for splitting all the different I'm leaving the questions to you guys. So uh, this is uh, split all the uh, all the sentences in the split. Okay, so it will just distribute them like this. We'll split all words in the list. Use the split function, and you got everyone separated. Okay. Now this is a simple program that I was talking about. So this is a Python program to check whether the string is a palindrome or not. So let's say that my string is this one, race car. And my so I lowered it down completely. So now it converted to R will become smaller, obviously, and then my string got lower. And then reverse string will be reverse of my string, which will be again R A C E C R. Okay. So it is going to check if list of my string is equal to equal to list of reverse string. Print given list uh, given string is a palindrome. Else, it is not a palindrome. So there are different methods of computer science students do it, but we are not going to do the programming right now. I'm like not preparing for data algorithm for the interview. So we'll try to show you the conditional statements here. So here you have the constraint if. So it is just trying to check that my string, which is stored here, which is the lower case of this car, the same way. So output of this one is the my string output is this thing, okay? Okay, and then you reverse string there, and then you reverse it. So now the output is this thing, which is now you can see that they are palindrome. They are from the reverse and the front. They both uh, are equivalent. So in Python programming, a list is created by placing all the items inside the square bracket, separated by commas. So you can create them. I'll show you an inspired command as well, that how you can you can verify that that's a list as well. And then you can add to the list by using a method called append. So my list is defined empty here. And then again, it is updated by one, two, three. And then list with index, you can also mix them. So my list is equal to one comma, hello. Comma three uh, three point one four. So let's go ahead quickly with it. So if I will show you this thing, okay, so I'll just comment it up. I make it empty and I try to print you this thing. It gives you index out of range because it doesn't exist, correct? So now if I do it, it is just empty, which is assigned here. Now I assign you one, two, and three, and now I try to print out the list. It gives you one, two, and three. Now I go to the my list. I mix them with the string and the float and the integer, and I assign them with this one. And now, if you print it, you see 
one hello and 3.4. Okay. The previous thing that he was looking at was this thing. So it is just what is that index one? So list uh, index position. I I will reiterate this thing that they started with one. So it started with zero. So this is a zero first position. This is a one and this is the second position. Okay. <clears throat> Then here you have similarly in the my list one you have high and then my list you can just replace any value by here so for example you here at my list at first index position you had hello so you just remove the hello with high and you now reprint the list and you will get the value of one high and 3.4 so it is just changing at the index position similarly by using the same for loop that we have seen before we can call up all the indexes and reiterate through them to change any values as well Okay, similar to list is the tuple, but tuple is an ordered sequence of items, same as this, but difference is that tuples are immutable. So it is once created, it cannot be modified, but lists, lists can be, okay. So for example, I decided a tuple here. So one, hello 3.4, and you see the tuple, it is coming up as equivalent to the list, but the brackets are changed. <clears throat> now the M tuple, now I'm trying to modify this one, okay by adding machine learning and then five, four, so it's okay, it, it, it is a nested tuple. So just making the uh, strings, then you have uh, another list inside it and then another tuple inside it. So you saw the list denotion was within the square bracket. So I'm trying to store a list inside a tuple, a string and another tuple. And I got to do so. So I get my string as well as my list as well as my tuple. Okay, so you can, this is to try at home. You can try tuple slicing with variables. I have shown you slicing before. So you can try that out. Uh, this is the homework. So you can just try it out. And then if you have facing issue, you can uh, post on uh, the Slack for, for the solutions. Okay, there is one more program here. So it is a program to sort words in alphabetical order. You can also do that. So there are a few questions that I'm putting up here. Please try to do so. <clears throat> so we have seen now function, similarly lists are, we have seen that it's a, uh, Data structure in which we have sequence data structure. It is collection of items, which is string, integers, and other lists. They are enclosed in square brackets. Each item in the list has an assigned index value. Each item in the list is separated by a comma. Lists are mutable, which means that they can't they can be changed. So list creation, I've seen you or shown you. Uh, so it is empty list with the square brackets. So you decide decide the first list to be like this, which is one, two, three, four. It is string. The list two is one, two, three, four. List one of the string list. Is a list of list one two three four and then one four one again again it's a different data type so you just try to print everyone so you can uh, print all of the list as well and you can print either of them to show you what this looks like it also gives you the length of the list by just using the method len and it will just give you the length of the list stored here so for example this li this list has three items in it one two and three separated by three comma so you have the length of the list is three here. To append a list, we use the function called as append. Okay, so as I said before, so once you call this append, it will try to add the item at the end. Okay, so this is the list already defined. Then you call it the append, and whatever you want to append, you add it to the. You just put it in the bracket, and when you print it, it will add it to the end. Okay, so, so we once you're changing the string, I'll just, you can make a note of it somewhere. It will be used probably in coming up lectures as well. These things are, because uh, majorly you will be using pandas or some other, uh, you know, uh, tools for uh, data collections, aggregation as well. So list will be used as well. So you can always remember this thing that check the length of the list, use LEN to check the length of the list. This might be used very useful in terms of running a program or a loop till the end of the uh, 
till the end end of the list. So if I want to run something and I want to call every single index, I'll just use for i in length of the list, and then it will quote till the length of the list or i in range, and then I put the zero to the length of the list. And then this is the append to change the list. So I want to add something to the list, and then I will use the append. For example, let's say that you have a given a uh, series of natural numbers, let's say till n, or say 10, and you just want to add to the list the numbers which are divisible by two. So what you're gonna do is you will call in the first number in the list. So you will call it for i in natural numbers list, and then the first value called divided by two, it is not equal to zero, so not, uh, not divisible by two, but once, so you created even numbers is equal to empty list, and then you just call even number dot append, and if it is divisible by two, then it will append, and then you append that specific number, okay? So it will be used for appending, and you know, changing or storing up the values further ahead. Then list insert is that inserting uh, a specific uh, values at uh, in the list at a specific indexes, so for example, list is given here, and I want to store that something at index two, which is zero, one, and two. So it will index, uh, so we will insert mathematics at the index two, and AI will be moved to the third mm -hmm. index. Okay, similarly, you have for remove, you can remove a specific, and you can uh, print the rest of the list. Then append and extend. So I have told you before that append is to uh, add something to the list. So once you add a list to the list, you can see there is another list added to this one. So you can append it. Extend will merge both of the list. Okay, and call them into simple uh, into a single list. Then you have list delete. So the first one is one, two, three, four, five. This is the list. Then you can delete at the position one. Position one is two. So you deleted it. So you have one, three, four, and five. Okay. Then you can use the pop as well. It is generally used in terms of stack, push and pop. So pop, you can pop uh, something from a specific value. So x is equal to list pop index one. So when you try to pop, it will pop till one, so it will <coughs> just give you, uh, so it will give you one, four, and five. Uh, can you, can somebody tell me why it is one, four, and five? Because it already deleted two. Yeah, perfect. <coughs> and so somebody is awake, no problem. So we have, then we have list sorting. So before going to this one, uh, I hope everybody has catched me up with all the other methods in the list. So I'll just quickly tell you again, to the length of the list, it is len, to append, it is dot append, to insert, it is dot insert, it is exactly same as English. To remove, it is dot remove, to append and extend. So append is just merging both of them, extending is merging both of them into one list. So you have dot extend and dot append. Then you have delete list, so you have delete uh, and then you can delete specific uh, position to pop. Also, you can also use pop to remove something from the specific position. Now, this is list sorting. This is to sort a list into a specific order. Okay. So, <clears throat> sort a list is you can use the sorted list function. And it, I think uh, uh, <clears throat> it is quite fast in, in, in the Python uh, to, to implement this uh, sorting. So you have similar number three, one, six, two, eight, and then you can sort the list by sorting list. There can be different methods of sorting that uh, in data structure classes, if somebody's from computing program, they might have done it, like quick sort, selection sort, merge sort, etc. But we are just dealing with the Python here, so you can call an inbuilt function of sorted and it will give you the sorted list. Okay. Or you can just, <clears throat> sort uh, the list in itself and call by calling the function to so list dot sort and then you have the list here is sorted okay so just, rings so just, yeah, yes 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 uh, uh in the previous line like you said uh, insert yes so where will it uh, insert at last i mean what will the position 
Yeah, uh, the position, the yeah, yeah, position you are giving here, no? So insert is position here, index are two, okay? So index two is zero, okay. one, and two. So this is the second index, so it will insert mathematical second index. That's why it pushed the AI okay. to the third index. Okay. Okay, and suppose uh, we want to uh, we want to delete something. So mm -hmm. whether uh, I mean we can do in both the we can do in both the way just by naming or just by uh, telling the position. Yeah, you can tell the position index value where you want to delete it, and you can delete it. Okay, so index value or index position both we can provide. Sujit, you are muted. I oh, didn't. Sorry, somebody muted me. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, once we will be doing it with the you know pandas and other stuff, I will be able to show you in place and other stuff. So if you delete something, some values are gone. So how to arrange it in a manner so that if they stick together, do not lose the go through pop once, please. Okay, pop and remove are the same stuff. It's to remove a specific item from something. So you can just remove, uh, you can imagine uh, this thing. Imagine yourself uh, eating a burger. Okay, so let's say that you have a <coughs> beef burger, sorry, chicken burger, and then you have the bun, then you have the uh, lettuce, and then you have the uh, chicken thari, then you have the uh, onions and then you have the tomato and then mayonnaise and some or more lettuce and then pack the onion, right? So if you want to remove the top of the onion, what are you going to do is you're going to remove the bun and then you have to remove the tomato and then you're going to remove the onion, right? So that's popping off. So it is the same way that you do pop. So if I want to delete something from a specific position index, I just use the pop here. So I decided the pop. It is called with the list or the stacks, and then from the index one, you're popping. So the one is two here, two here, but it was already deleted. So three will be the one index. So it got deleted. Okay, so one, three, four, five was a new list, and then three got popped out. It means that you're just taking it out. Okay. I hope that's clear enough, right? Pop is like taking anything out uh, similar to delete. Okay, so now here we are going. So I think pop is, everybody got it, right? Okay, so now we are going for, uh, so looking at the list, so uh, so we have done the list sorting, sorry. So string split to create a list. So for example, this is your whole string that we have seen. So we can just split the string in order to create a list of all the strings that are present here in terms of hello, welcome to and machine learning that we have seen up as well. So it has created you a list, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, till fifth of index to call up any values. You can extend the list using plus as well. So it is similar to, uh, so as I've shown you up above as well that you can merge two lists. So you have list one, which is with three uh, three values in it, list two with three, two values in it. If you merge both of them, it will be five values in it, okay? When your list count is one, two, three, one, three, four, two, five, okay? So this is the number that you have. You can just, imp <coughs> you can do, uh, counting of a specific uh, frequency of a specific digits in a list. So let's say that the one has been repeated twice. So if I just use numbers, which is the list here, dot count, which is the method for the list, I count the frequency of one. So frequency of one is two. Similarly, I try to count the frequency of three. It is two as well. If I change the frequency number to five, the frequency should be one, okay? So the count function is to check the frequency of everything. List looping is simple. I, it has explained been above as well that you start with uh, your index value and then you start looping into the list. So zero, one, two. 
So for element in list one, print element. Okay. So A L E. So it's a variable. So it will start with the list one. So starting the list one, you have the index zero, one and two. So it will keep on printing every single value. <clears throat> so this is a list comprehension. So it is a way to provide a concise way to create a list, uh, and then. Where each element of is the result of some operation applied to each member of the another sequence or each tables, it will create a subsequence of those elements that satisfy a certain condition. So let's say that you have queues, which is an empty list, and you are starting from i till 10. Okay, so 10 not included. You are going to append to this list the numbers with whose uh, so cube of those numbers. Okay, this is the same thing I was trying to explain you before through a natural number example. So this is an empty list. So with every single print, you are trying to append the values to here. Okay. So if we want to really visualize it, you can do this thing here. So if I show you print cubes, you can see by every single step of the for loop till nine, I said ten times it will go. It will try to print a value. You see, so zero and zero one, the zero one eight, and zero one eight two twenty seven, and it is keep on increasing, right? So it is just appending the values into the original empty list. Similarly, here you have this. Uh, so you can just use simple comprehension as well, which is like i cube for i in the range of 10. So it's just in one single line, you will be having the output here. I think you might be very much comfortable in doing it. Don't go for comprehension. You can just try it at simple statements in R to do the Python or people who are good with it or want to play with it, you can use the comprehension. Tuple is similar to the list that we have seen. So you have T created and 425. Once you print the T, you will come to C425. Then again, date mixed data types and mixed uh, <coughs> list as well. So we have all the things. Changing a tuple. So you can't change the tuple as I have explained before. It is immutable. It means that once it is defined, you will not uh, be able to delete or something similar or place uh, similar to the list. So once you try to do that, you will see you will get an error. Okay. <clears throat> then you have the set. Set, I think this we all know from our class six, seven, I don't know. The set is an ordered collection of items. Every element is unique and you don't have any duplicates. The set itself is mutable and we can add or remove items from it. The sets can be used to perform mathematical set operations like union, intersection, symmetric differences, etc. So you have 10, 30, 20, 40, and 5. So you see this is a set. So it has been gone here. So my set is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, and then my set. So you try to just print in the my set and you got it here. Okay. So just I'll tell you one more thing. So, okay, so one thing to emphasize is there is uh, the set cannot, will not have the duplicate. So for example, I have this thing repeating twice. So this will not be called in, but if I put any numbers after this even, it will be called in. So if you are going to just find the unique uh, numbers, uh, you can just use it to find out the unique one. Okay. So it's set and dictionary, <coughs> I was just about thinking that. So yeah, this set, distinguish set and dictionary while creating empty set. So you can create X is equal to like this and type of X and Y is equal to set type of Y. So if you just create an empty like this, it will count as a dictionary. In dictionary, it is similar to your dictionary uh, that we use in English. So you have a word and then you have explained meaning. So in the dictionary in the Python, you have a key value and key, and then you have the value corresponding to it. So you type of the X defined like this will be a dictionary, but you have to, when you initialize a set, you will have to call it a set, you have to do so. Dictionaries are quite useful. We might be using it in probably in the, uh, some complex programs if we are trying to solve or achieve. Then for example, my set here is three, six, nine, and 12, and then I call it a my set. That is, it cannot have the mutable items. It is already decided here. So unhashable type, which is list, it cannot insert that. So if we try to use for indexing, then also set will say that object is not subscriptable. Okay, so my set zero, it, uh, if it is done a list, you would have got 18, but since it is that, you will not get an uh, index value from it. 
to how to add an element to the set. For example, you have already defined a set, which is my set. Okay. Yeah. So you have already defined a set, which is my set. You can add a value, then it will, uh, you will ask to print it. Okay. So let's, for this purpose, let's say I call it my set once more. So, <clears throat> So my set is one, two, three, four, and then you are adding a specific value. It can get, and you can add multiple elements as well to the set. If I make it, if, if you can delete a value as well, let's say. Let's say I just call up this set from here. But I just so first it will uh, sort them and then let's include some other things so that we know the difference. So you added them. So you added the first time you added two, so it is one, two, five, seven, eight, and then you try to again update it, multiple items. So you added one, so you are now two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Okay, so that's sorted all in all. How to remove an element from the set? For removing an element of the set, you just need to discard a value. So it will just remove the value from the set. For example, print s. <coughs> so you can give you one, two, three, four, three, four, five in sorted order. Then you can just use discard four and we remove the four or you can just use the remove and then call the index value of that value as well no you just say no sorry not index value oh, sorry you can just remove the element from there as well without using the function remove so it will just remove the three from there now you have different sets operation here so set one and set two so this is similar to what we have seen in our basic mathematics that the operation that we use uh, these, if you are unable to comprehend all of this at the same pace, uh, please uh, just try to hold on. You will get the Jupyter notebook. And don't worry, uh, we will not be using probably all of it, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of Python that if you are using it in the future, you will not be afraid of using it. And if I'm using it in future, uh, I will also explain it again on the uh, on the site if you have a doubt on, doubt on it. So set one and set two, and then you just trying to find the union of two sets. So just merging them together. You can use this or you can just call the union as well. So the best part of the Python is that if you are, if you have forgotten that, uh, that, that in any symbolic operation or something, you can use the simple English language to do so as well. So intersection, set one and set two. So it will just use the intersection to give you the output. Then difference is set one minus set two. So set one difference set two. So it is one comma two. Now we come to the uh, creation. We have seen the dictionary before, right? So we, when you use the curly braces, we saw that the dictionary was initialized. So I said that your key and the value. So you initialize my dictionary as simple, a curly braces empty, right? So my dict one is one with ML and two as AI. So if I print this, I will get one as ml and two as ai okay now similarly your name is john and one corresponds corresponds to abc and xyz okay so it will give you that sort of dictionary as well similarly my dict three is by just using the term dictionary also you can create an empty dictionary it will be very much useful if you are using a program which requires a quick memory uses because by just by using uh, maybe something similar to hashing or something, you can access the memory very faster and get the output. So my dict four. So you see here I've decided it is a dictionary. So it is a one corresponding to ABC and two corresponding to XYZ. So it is called dictionary, same way. Okay. So 
similarly you have my <coughs> my dates which is name name age address education so you can just a specific value because so age is the key right so you're just getting an output so print my deck age it should be 35 the value corresponding to age or you can just use my dick dot get and then from the value corresponding to age and give you 35 okay you can update any values or something like that so name is here so my dick name is equal to williams it will replace the john with the williams and dick education is equal to phd so education will convert to phd my dick name and the my dick education so you see just try to print it and then you got the output as williams and phd the dictionary methods there are different dictionary methods so for example you have <coughs> form keys uh should i cover this right now or leave it for further okay i am already over time i don't know if you uh uh you can let me know or somebody from the group let me know that you have to stop so uh, yeah it will be better if, if you can stop here okay then uh, and, i'll just uh, mark it as yeah. dictionary methods and i'll take it in the next lecture only there is only uh, yes. one or uh, two topic actually not too many so i'll just start in the beginning okay how much time approximately it will take to complete uh maybe say this way because i'm interested in numpy and other stuff as well so let's say 20 minutes <coughs> approximately okay so so stop it uh, so let's stop it here and open uh, some uh, questions from the participants if they have yeah right. go at least if you have any mm -hmm. questions and then you can post it on slack as well hello can you hear me your voice is coming up very squeaky uh, is it clear now no can you write down your question uh, in the yeah. chat, please share the this Jupyter notebook. Yeah, I'll share this Jupyter notebook. Uh, hello, now is it okay? I, I wanted to ask what is the difference between remove and discard? Ankit, better to type in the chat box please, uh, because your uh, voice is not audible. Sorry, can I uh, like uh, tell his what he is telling? Like uh, he is asking about uh, like differences between uh, remove and discard. So remove and discard are basically the same thing. We are just trying to remove uh, the same uh, element from. Uh, same element from this uh, set, for example, that we were defining. Uh, like we wanted to remove something so we said that remove three it removed the element three from the uh, from from that one and then we tried to uh, discard four and then it discarded the four from that uh, set as well right so it is the same thing uh, almost the same thing but if you go in uh, very uh, deep of uh, how to the how it will affect your program actually then you will have to uh, you, you can use it like uh, you can use actually the remove function uh, from using from a specific uh, indexing and then putting it at some other indexing as well. So it can be used for that similar to like copy pasting, but discard can't use that. People are asking. Uh, it will be better if you can provide the Jupyter note prior to the lectures for the download. Yeah, yeah, I will be giving a Jupyter. I'll just send the Jupyter note right to you, and then you can. Put it. Or you wanted to me to put on the Slack something? Whatever you like, you can put it in the Slack, or you can directly mail me. I'll put it in Slack. Okay, I'll mail. And prior to the lecture. Yes. Prior to the lectures. Yeah. Can we use Google Collab instead? Means like it would be easy to share between everybody and then you can. Uh, that is the, no, actually, that is the problem. I don't want anybody else to work on it when I'm working on it. So, so that is something. So, yeah, okay. I'll try to give you the code file okay. and, uh, but if we, if we, if we give you before. I'm like, 
once I explain it, then you have it and then you can practice it, isn't it? That will make more sense. I'm like, I'm just trying to find the comfortability. If I give you beforehand and uh, then I don't think, and then you will have recorded lecture anyway, so you don't need to come to the lecture. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can say people are trying to edit your uh, Jupyter file and see the changes. I mean, they don't want to write. Yeah, so... That's right. Yeah, okay. Or, or I think, actually, see, the one reason I'm not giving you a Jupyter file, I like, I don't want to say for every one of you. Yeah, so somebody saying while typing, typing, we lose a lot of time, but fingers will help you to put some of the keywords into your memory. If you just keep on control, enter my every cell, I know my every cell works. <laughs> so that will not be very much helpful. I know that every cell works and will be output. So you'll not be able to remember it for the longer period of time. I know it can be time consuming but it will help you actually. So let's keep it like this only. So after the lecture, as soon as the lecture finishes, I will drop you the Jupyter notebook. You can then maybe just keep control entering it. But I would prefer that you maintain your own notebook and you keep on writing in that. Uh, there is a question. Uh, can you explain, can you explain nested lead comprehension? Nested list, list is simple list, in, list inside the list. It is simple, same as like we use nested for, for like nested loop, a loop inside a loop. You keep in it. Can you explain the output of the triangle, the last two lines, why they are saying this triangle is she talking about? What triangle are you talking about? Which line it is? We printed the cubes. Okay. I think for so, so triangle. Okay, the thing that I was no no when we printed the cubes, can you hear me? Yeah yeah yeah. When we printed the cubes. Yeah. So if you go to the output, there's like yeah. the last output comes out to be twice. Oh okay oh, oh okay 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 I just oh okay. So, wow, you guys are quite observant, isn't it? So, so when I'm printing- oh, Okay, it, there's a second print, okay. Yes, so you have yeah, two okay. Sorry. print cubes here, okay? So first okay. it will print the last element, add it, and then it will print the okay. Okay. Okay, guys, you can also post your queries in our Slack platform and TH or uh, speaker himself can respond in the uh, Slack channel. And also before uh, asking questions, uh, please go once through the recordings, we will provide you so that you can have a better understanding. And even if you don't understand, then please ask. And obviously we can ask, but uh, what I'm, so I'm just again telling you, reiterating it, what I'm just telling you will be quite useful, uh, will might be useful when we are doing the program. Some of the components, you might never use it. Don't, don't curse me for that. So if you can consider that some extra information and once you can go to the Python, it can be done. However, I know that if you have done that video that I sent you, it would have explained you some basic concepts of the Python anyway. So, but it's still, it's for my satisfaction, I'm explaining it. And in the next class, we'll cover this. And in the next class, we'll also cover the data representation. So we actually start everything from the next class, which is how to look at the data or present the data. So you're using different libraries for it. Uh, one small announcement I would like to make. Uh, from you, next lecture you, onward. Okay, one more question somebody posted here. Can you tell about prerequisite for ML? There are, if you want to do, become an ML researcher or deep learning researcher, obviously you have a too much prerequisite. But for this lecture, I have designed it in order to uh, in order to in order to let you understand uh, every single thing uh, in a short fashion and you have an overall knowledge of the machine learning platforms but once you go into deep into it you need to know statistics probability calculus uh, that's three basic fundamentals of some mathematics then you have different models like Bayesian and uh, and uh, Boltzmann machines and other stuff so it depends on the area of research you're working on it but this uh, tutorial actually lecture series will help you in your own research, if you are not from the computing background, to implement any data and take a meaningful result out of that.
Can I can I ask a question if there's yes, time? Yes, definitely. Yeah, so basically when we were talking about reversing strings, yeah. so you you proposed a function called reverse that string, mm -hmm. but when I tried it, the output that I got was not a string, it was an object and then we had I talked to the TA and basically we had to convert it into a list and then print it and even then it did not really look like a string whereas what i wanted was you know the reversed order of characters it should look similar to the original object right so uh, basically the tas have been proposing a lot of different solutions to this like good like you can see one of them in the chat right now and then okay. there's also underscore underscore reverse the string so uh, different different functions so my general question is that how do we choose between these different implementations and okay. which one is the best because uh, there was one more of this like when you when you propose the uh, function is instance i think that whether this variable is of this type uh, you use is instance and i tried to do it using double equals that you know type type of x equals equals int and then it gives a true false so essentially it's the same output i get the same result except that in a programming environment because people keep on developing the new methods and other stuff so you will have different methods for uh, getting out a different uh, output none of them are right uh, none of them are wrong and you can't uh, like there is no uh, best method or something it can be different with a different beginner to advanced level it actually depends on the click for example when working for amazon or for the microsoft in the beginning so it just click so whenever it clicked to, you know, when I started coding. Uh, so I, 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 I'm coding since I'm 10 years old approximately. So it becomes with intuition actually when you move from the basic to an advanced stage. So I was trying to explain here in the lecture which is the basic knowledge in order to do so. And also you can uh, look at the similar approaches maybe when you try to solve any sort of problem or something online and then you see the similar uh, solution in the same line of context as well. So you will have a similar uh, background to do so. For example, the concept remains same. For example, somebody is asking that my string colon colon minus work, how this works. It is the same way as I showed you before, isn't it? In the program that how an incrementation was happening. So zero, eight, and two. So, uh, so it was incrementing in the terms of two, right? So it is same thing, same, exactly same thing, no changes, right? So it is minus one, so it means that it will decrement from the minus one. And they, when you have colon and colon, <clears throat> It's telling that you have to start at the end of the string at the end of the position zero and you have to move to the step minus one. So it's been like one step backwards. So it will keep on uh, printing this uh, towards backwards. Okay. Okay, guys, I think uh, we should stop here. Further, if you have queries, then you can ask in uh, next uh, session or in the Slack platform. Uh, and one more announcement I would like to make. Uh, you can join five minutes earlier uh, in the next session so that while we are waiting for other participants, meanwhile, you can ask questions. And whoever TH or speaker is available, they can answer at that time, okay? Yeah, that would be great. Additionally, one thing you should not expect is to program, uh, you know, get a program from anyone of us to solve your assignments in a class or the projects. <laughs> so uh, before I'm taking some, some more lecture, I'm taking some more lecture and one participant came and said that I have been trying Boltzmann machines for a long time and I don't know how to program it. Can you please program it for me? I'm not going to do that. I can tell you the concept, but not going to do that. Okay. Of course, this is the best way of uh, learning. <laughs> right, perfect. So I'll drop you. Uh, I'll drop the uh, lecture wrote, uh, note just right now in the Slack itself in the machine learning group, and you can have it. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Then Thank you. Have a Thank great you all day. For Bye.